All right, Divinity Care, November 22nd, the will of God. What is the will of God? All right, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus said, It's not everyone who calls him Lord, Lord, that will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, yes. but only those who do the will of God, the will of my Father in heaven. Matthew 7, 21, so we're going to have to do the will of God. It's not every Christian that's going to make it. It's every Christian who does the will of God. God. We need to know that, okay, because... Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, after we do the will of God, we will receive what is promised. After we do the will of God, we will receive what is promised. It was the same way with Abraham. And our covenant is based on a promise given to Abraham. Okay, Abraham had to keep the ways of the Lord before the Lord would bring about what was promised to him. Genesis 18, 18 and 19, learn that for yourself. Okay, and so Hebrews chapter 6, 11, 12, we have to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Okay, learn that for yourself. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. We have to endure all the way to the end in order to be saved in the end. We were saved by grace through faith to begin with. Okay, but we have to do the will of the Father and endure all the way to the end in order to be saved in the end. Part of God's will for our life is that Jesus should lose none of those that God gave Jesus. That God gave Jesus. Okay, you see, the Christian life is... God saves us, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, okay? And then those who hear and learn from God, if, uh, John 6, 44 through 45, those who hear and learn from God are drawn to Jesus, okay? I know the Bible says in John 12, 32, that if, when Jesus be lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. But it's those who hear and learn from God that are granted to come to Jesus, John 6, 65, Learn that for yourself. And what God taught us to begin with was love one another. Not in word and tongue, but in deed and in truth. And that's how we know that we belong to the truth. That's in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 down through verse 19. We're going to have to love one another just like he taught us to begin with. Okay, And even if we're granted to come to Jesus, if we don't continue to bear the fruit, God is the one who takes us out. John 15, 1 and 2. Okay, So if we don't continue to bear fruit, God is going to take us out. So we have to maintain good works. Okay, or we will be unfruitful. Okay, so just understand that. So every Christian who gets to remain is bearing the fruit. And so John 6, 39 through 40, the Christians that God gives Jesus are the ones that he's going to give eternal. He's going to uh, raise them up on the last day. All right, so read verse 39 with verse 40. Also, John chapter 10, read verse 28 down through verse 30. Again, it's those Christians that God gave Jesus that cannot be snatched out of his hand. It's not every Christian. It's the Christians that God gave to Jesus. John 17, verse 2, Jesus gives eternal life to as many as God gives him. Okay, so God saves us. God gives us to Jesus. And then Jesus saves those who come to God through him. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 9 and verse 10, learn that for yourself. So that's a part of God's will for, for uh, is that Jesus loses none of the ones that God gave him. Another part of God's will is sanctification in conduct. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through verse 8. Sanctification in conduct, that we be holy in all of our conduct, and whoever rejects this, rejects God. If you look at that, verse 7 and verse 8, whoever rejects holiness, okay, rejects God. And get this part. That's a part of the gospel. It's a part of the gospel. God is able to establish us for obedience to the faith. And that's a part of the gospel. Romans 16, 25 through 26, that we should be preaching. Okay? And so certainly if we reject the gospel, that's everlasting punishment. Okay? Those who don't obey the gospel are going to receive everlasting punishment in the end. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 16, verse 10. So learn that for yourself. God is able to preserve us blameless or preserve us, uh, establish us for obedience to the faith. He's also able to preserve us blameless. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 23, 24. God is able to preserve our whole body, soul, and spirit blameless and, and, until the very end, to the day of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, 24. Learn that for yourself. He's able to keep us from stumbling. Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Okay, and so all of this is a part of the gospel. We have to be holy in all of our conduct. Same thing in 1 Peter chapter 1, 14 through, through verse 16. Be holy in all of your conduct, okay? Just just, just imagine that for a second, okay? Not only do Philippians chapter 1, 27 through 30, not only are we supposed to walk worthy of the gospel, 
We're also supposed to walk worthy of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. We're supposed to walk worthy of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. And we're supposed to walk worthy of our calling. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. So we have instructions to walk worthy according to what is written in the New Testament. The Apostles' Doctrine. Be holy in all of your conduct. Hebrews chapter 12, 14 and 15. Pursue peace and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. We have to be holy. We have to be holy. If not, we're going to fall short of the grace of God. Fall short of the grace of God. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Learn that for yourself. First Peter chapter 2, 13 through verse 17. It's a part of God's will for our life that by doing good, we may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Yeah, it's a part of God's will that we do good, even in the face of suffering. First Peter chapter 2, 13 through 17. That's also First Peter chapter 3, 13 through 17. Read both of those and learn both of those for yourself. Also, First Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Okay, commit our souls to God as a faithful creator and continue to do good. All right, and so here's here's the thing. If we believe God in these things, okay, we can receive this. But if we speak against these things, we don't believe God in our heart. Okay, and we're not going to receive anything from God. Imagine that. Just think about that for a second. There's more hope for a person who believes because Jesus will show as a pattern all long suffering toward those who believe. First Timothy chapter chapter one, verse sixteen. All right, and so learn that for yourself. May the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.